Hello everybody. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some work on my van. Why not? I think I can probably find a few days over the next few weeks to kind of get out here and do something on my actual van. It's a real mess. I've been I've got solar panels here, batteries here for a customer that this that I'm working for this week. Um, basically what I'm gonna be working on is water. Now I did have a pressure washing business in uh, that I ran out the back of this van so there's a massive 250 litre water tank in the back there I'm not pressure washing anymore I'm, I'm touch wood doing my hobby now for my job driving around doing electrical installs for people in their camper vans and motorhomes upgrading what they've got to usually Victron stuff so I don't need such a big water tank so I quite like having uh, being, being able to carry quite a lot of water um, it's worked out quite handy for my family when we do a road trips in the van and we're out in the middle of nowhere I've got plenty of water I can often give water to my parents and my grandparents so I quite like having a lot of water so I'm gonna change the 250 litre upright water tank that I've got for a hundred yeah not 250 get rid of 250 I'm putting 125 litres water tank in here it's an upright one I've got a metal frame in the back, so I just need to cut that down and make it make it fit to hold the uh, the new water tank. So that's the plan. I'm going to do that now. But also, once that's done, I've also got something very excited about. I'm working with Bobble. Have you heard of Bobble? Yeah, I've got their uh, air hybrid to use. So that basically it can warm up water using a diesel heater. The hot air from a diesel heater passes through a heat exchanger which has water pumping through it, recirculates it into a tank. But also the hybrid part of it is that it's also a 12 volt water heater. So you can set it so that when your batteries get to 100%, your solar panels, that wasted energy, because it's not doing anything once your batteries are at 100%, that solar coming in can start warming up water it also works when you're driving as well off the alternator. So once your battery's at 100%, the DC to DC charger, you know, the alternator will start warming up the water. So when you get to a destination, when you've got, when you've got, <laughs> it's great. When you've got solar, when you've got plenty of sunshine, you're warming it up that way. When you go for a drive, you, you when you get there, you've got warm water. And when in the winter, when you've got your heater on in the evenings, that's warming up the water as well. So it's... <laughs> How amazing is that? So we've got that to install as well over the next few weeks. As well as doing all my other work, driving all over the country, getting everybody else's vans done. So let me show you in the back, show you what a mess this garage is. I'll try and find a picture of what the garage used to look like when I first built it. It was gorgeous. And then I used it for a pressure washing business for years and it got trashed and destroyed and wet and damp. And it used to look really good, but I'm going to pull up the floor, I think, in there. It's all checker play. I'm going to pull up the floor, leave the sides on, because it's good rugged, you know, it protects the walls. Uh, but I'll put some soft flooring down. Some of that, those jigsaw pieces, foam jigsaw piece floor. I like, I like those. Ugh. So let's go around the back and show you what the uh, garage looks like at the minute. This is the tank that's going. Massive, mega. That's the tank that I used for pressure washing, but no more do I need it. But yeah, you can see this whole garage was the bottom. You can't see because it's full of all the flooring. And halfway up the walls is all checker plate, it's just to kind of protect it, make it look nice as well. But it's also heavy, so I'm gonna get rid of the floor section. I'm gonna to have to grind out the tank sits on some of it. So, ugh, so much rubbish. I want to get this all organised, full of just get it all nice and put shelves in and stuff. So let's start by trying to rip out all this plumbing. Let's get rid of this water tank. These are waffle boards which are going to be mounted to the outside of the van. Just like tools and the table and more tools and... Oh! I need to organise this garage. Let's drain that water first, eh? Oh, 
old tank, new tank. Let's unpackage it and you can see the size difference. Good morning everybody, how are you? It's been a while since I've even picked up the camera, angle you a bit better. It's been a while, I've been manically busy, we've been driving all over the country doing work on people's vans. If you need any help with electronics in your camper vans or motorhomes, let me know. Right, got a big box here. I don't know how long this is going to take me, I'm not very good with the, what this kind of particular type of job is. I haven't got much experience with this. <clears throat> when it comes to gas and 240 volt stuff and plumbing which is what this is all about I'm not great with that so I need to get my experience levels up and this will hopefully help me I'm good with 12 volts I'd say I'm great with 12 volts nice and neat my, I'm still learning but <clears throat> there's always lots to learn so this collaboration is with Bobble they have very kindly provided me with a water heater that I've, I've wanted for a long time this is the air hybrid so it heats water in a few ways amazing technology what a clever idea uh, I've wanted this for a while I mean I'm all about off-grid um, <clears throat> I'm all about off-grid so I, I, I want to use gas as less as possible I am using gas for cooking but eventually as most people are doing now they're getting a larger battery bank big inverter so that they can cook on free electric they've captured from the sun you know what I mean so this is part of my way to go in even further to creating an off-grid camper van so I'm gonna have free hot water basically I don't have to boil water use gas don't have to use fossil fuels and gas to warm up water anymore hopefully this system will allow me to have hot water for free <laughs> So um, I don't know how much I'm going to get done today. It's going to take. It's going to span over a few weeks, I imagine. This uh, video. But let me open the box and let's see what's in there because I'm very excited about this. Let me get a knife. I'll be right back. All right. In the top section of this box, we've got instructions. They're going to be extremely useful. We've got some rubber hose pipe. These are different cowlins which go around a heat exchanger. I think this is for the diesel heater bit that goes around a heat exchanger and then water passes through the heat exchanger, which is getting warmed up by the diesel heaters. This is a uh, selection valve. I don't know what they call it, but you can decide from the diesel heater whether it goes, say this is, uh, whether it goes into the van 100%, into the water heater 100%, or you can do a bit of both, warm up the van and warm up the water. Very clever bag of parts for that. I think this whole top section is for that. So this, oh yeah, this is, actually I saw this for the first time the other day, this is very clever. This uh, enables you to change the angle of where that heat is being diverted from a lever like this. So that is clever. Oh, <laughs> okay. There's a whole box of stuff in here, including the most essential bits. There's a little bit of bag of Haribo in here. How fun is that? We've got pipe clips and adapters and taps and more pipe. There's a lot to this. So if you buy this kit, there, this is probably an let, let, yeah, this is a temperature control thing in here. So if you buy this kit, everything is involved, everything is included. Oh my goodness, I've really got to sit down with some instructions. How am I going to tackle this job by myself? Oh my goodness, okay. There's a lot in here. I wanted to get to the main the main thing. Let's see what's in this box. There's one massive box here, so that was all up to there, then the bottom of this box. Is where all the magic happens. Oh my goodness, there's just so many parts to this. I hope it's easier than it looks. Hope the instructions are good, eh? What is this? It looks like a battery, but it can't be. That is the heat exchanger. Look at this. Is 
this is the heat exchanger. This is what the diesel, the air for the diesel heater passes through. So you, I think you put these parts the other side of it, so your ducting can pass through this. That looks wow well smart. I'm going to try and fit this in a way in my garage so that it's kind of visible or on show for people to stick their heads in and have a look because. I think everybody should have this system in their van. I'm going to really try and sell this system to everybody because free hot water, off-grid hot water, what's not to like? Right, how do I get this out? A lot of you, like me, will see all the, the amount of parts for this and be a bit daunted. But, this video, <laughs> oh yeah, I've got to say, I've stopped making how-to videos. So this is not a how-to video, this is a how-I video. This is how I do it. So you can copy or not copy, but I'm not telling you how to do it, this is just how I do and how I get on with my experience. Have a look at this. This is obviously where all the water is stored and comes out of. It's a cylindrical tube. I'll put the tank size on the screen now. I think it's like 10, 15 litres or something. Yeah, 10 litres. So it's obviously 10 litres of hot water isn't doesn't sound like a lot a lot of uh, water, but you mix it with cold, don't you? You don't use just hot water. So if you mix it with cold. Should be able to de have a decent shower with it. Enough, plenty, pl certainly plenty for washing up. The label's upside down, but it says, yeah, 12 volt DC. Where do we start? <clears throat> I think I'm gonna sort out the garage of my van and prepare a space for it. I've got to build a space for it. A so I made the van a complete mess, as you do when you're working on it, but I went and bought some Unistruck parts. Those are these parts for Unistrut because I had I had some Unistrut uh, lying around so I'm, I'm making a sort of a platform for the he heater to sit so let me show you in the garage what, what I'm up to excuse the mess so I did have a large water tank up to here somewhere for my pressure washing business that I used to do but as I don't do that anymore I bought one half the size so I've got a 125 litre upright tank which is for cold water and I've put these Unistrut admittedly onto a piece of wood here. I didn't have another bit of Unistrut to go across, but that's solid into the back of this wall. Fixed into the metal and into the wood behind it. Uh, and on this side, yes, I've used the uh, correct Unistrut mountings. So this is the platform that I'm gonna put the bubble water heater on. So I've got space down here for like the heater or, if I, I think if I get a second diesel heater to do the water in the winter um, but I'm gonna get the, the heater back here and, and uh, just put that in place and then see what the next step is don't know exactly where to put it yet But uh, I could use this uni strut, it's good stuff this uni strut, I could use this for mounting water pumps or whatever I need to mount really. So, don't know, I'm going to just fix it in place with some uni strut bolts. And um, maybe for now I'll just put it here, but I, I think I'm, it's going to be awkward because I need to pass the pipes from here through this wall. I'm going to be replacing this John Gist thing here. So. I'll just put it there for now because it's that nice and out of the way. Right, I've fixed it here for now. I don't know if it's going to need some clearance here. So I'll, I'll probably slide it forward a little bit more. But I've got all this space to mount pipes and pumps to if I need to. I'm actually going to do the unblokey thing. I'm going to go and read the instructions, watch some YouTube videos. And uh, hopefully I'll have a better idea how the rest of this setup works. 
I could actually mount a diesel heater, but this is the, uh, a second diesel heater back here. And I can divert it to either the water, to, uh, to the water, or divert it back into the van if, uh, if my other one ever stopped working. So, I'll be right back with you guys. So I'm actually following Bobble's own video on this. So they've created a video which I will link down below in the description so you can follow their video as well on how to install these. First thing they've done is install this tap here onto the cold water uh, inlet. This this also has a uh, a tap with a hose on it so you can dr the hose should go out the floor of the van so you can drain the system in the winter. I don't know if I'll need that. Um, it's all in the van. I don't ever drain the system. I might actually have it. The tank is right below it, so for the water, cold water. So I may just dump it in there because I never. I say it's still insulated in here. I don't really ever drain the system. But I suppose that maybe I will want to. But yeah, I could drain it into this tank, and then I'm, I've, I've, I have got a drain valve on this tank as well to drain out the back door. So yeah, you got a pair of rubber, one of these little rubber bungs in here. Which way round? Um, it doesn't say to use any PTFE tape. I would have put PTFE on. I would have put PTFE on this thread. Maybe I will, but for now I'm just going to get things in place. So that's going to go onto there. So now I'm going to prepare the pump ready to put into the system. So this bit. Yeah, on both. Done. I've got to do. So this is the 13 mil silicon hose. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Stop. 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 Thank you very much. You're being very helpful. So yeah, this has got like a solar dump on it. So whenever your leisure batteries are full. It starts warming up a 12 volt element in here. Right now I'm learning to assemble the heat exchanger for the diesel heater inside of heating the water. So I need a couple of these angle things. Remove these two top caps. Rubber washes on. Screw these angled connectors in and they should be well that's clever okay I will give all these things a tweak with the tiniest tweak of a pair of pliers and I'm not sure about PTFE tape but they've all got rubber washers on <clears throat> face them in like that then you screw in some barbs into those Is. Again, I will tweak these. Okay, now you got to do the same on the. This is where the water's. Put some barbs into these ports diagonally from each other. I don't think it matters which way around you do, but you've got to do opposite corners so the water passes through and comes out the other side. And then on the bottom, you've also got a, a, a way to drain this system from here as well. So, yeah, but, um, now I'm going to fit these. These are the adapters. You have the rubber washer, rubber seal that goes in between these. There's one on the other side as well. So it will look something like that. And that's what the hot air from your heater blows through whilst water is circulating through this middle bit warming up and circulating in back into your t tank. Next step is to drill a hole with a 4mm drill bit in the top of through, the, through one of these holes on, on the uh, that's for the temperature sensor to poke through to monitor how warm water is that's passing through. So you get a 4mm drill bit, drill that. Like so. These are rubber guards, rubber washers, and you use the screws that are in this little, looks like a memory card case. It's been so long since I've worked on my van. I'm enjoying this. Right, I need a Phillips screwdriver. 
clever little tip I just picked up from Bobble. Put the gasket on first. Poke the screws through the gasket. The gasket holds the screws on just about. And then it'd be, it's much easier to put this section on knowing that the gasket is in the right place, sealing what it needs to seal. Clever stuff. This is such a clever kit. So all you people out there that have recently fitted gas heaters to your water system. It's time, maybe time for an upgrade, eh? Free hot water. I mean, how cool is that? My batteries are charged up by 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. So then all afternoon, all that excess power that I'm getting from solar or the alternator of the, vet, of the engine when I'm driving is now warming up water. Don't even think I'm going to need to use this heat exchanger bit from, for a diesel heater. But I've got it. I've ins I'll install it. I might not install the diesel heater in this video for it, but I'll put it in place so that you know how it's all going to work. So that is the heat exchanger. All bar like a drain valve at the bottom here. Building the diverter. This is like a, a three-way or two-way splitter. You can divert air. Air will come from the diesel heater this way and you can divert it straight into the van, straight into the water heater, or have it half and half and do, do a bit of both. So you can see in there, maybe. Okay, this is the little tiny uh, circulator pump that pumps water around the heat exchanger. Um, a little tip, which is what I'm not going to do, is put this rubber hose in some hot water, or warm water for a couple of minutes so it stretches a bit easier to get over this, but I'm just going to use a bit of elbow grease and use the larger pipe clips. Alright, okay, you've got two very similar looking Y splitters. One, one has got a larger shaft. <laughs> that bit there. This one looks similar, but it's been kind of, it is smaller. The holes may be the same size, but these sort of barbs have been kind of ground down a bit. So anyway, this is the one I need for this side. So I'll show you one second. This, this side here is larger than those two that goes into the thicker pipe. Got to say, Bobble's video and Bobble's instructions are actually very good. I'm more of a view it kind of, to be able to take stuff in and learn, I'd, I'd rather view it than read it. Um, that's how I, I can process things a bit easier if I can see it. But the instructions are very good as well for those who prefer reading. So that's that bit. Now we use a section of this smaller pipe to go onto the outlet of the pump using smaller pipe clips. But then we need a one-way valve, which I'm assuming is these. That's a one-way valve. And there is a tiny little triangle pointing in the, in the direction the water should go. Keep talking to myself without the camera being on. All right, little cut a little section of hose off. Get some two pipe clips on. Two, and then the one-way valve, which is here, making sure that the arrow is facing the way the water is going to travel, which is that direction. Double check, double check. Yeah. Okay. It's all going together really nice and easy, I have to say. Okay. So I know that this section will go to the hot outlet on the water tank, the bubble heater. And this section will go to a hot kitchen tap, if I had one, which I don't yet. But I will, because I need to do the whole kitchen. This is an excuse to get rid of this SMEV unit that I've got. 
and get a separate sink and a separate hob and hot and cold tap. Oh, it's going to be so good. Right, so I know where this is being mounted. I'm going to fix that in the mirror. Uh, the, this side goes to an isolator valve, a uh, little section of hose, which they say can be, because it's like a, they say this type of hose could be used as a bit of an accumulator. So you don't have to, if you don't have one fitted, it kind of, you don't need an accumulator for this system. So I need a, an isolator valve, which is one of these. Yeah, it's an isolator valve, so I can switch off the out of, of the circuit of this pump. And then it splits into a T and goes off to the cold tap, a drain valve, and if you've got a shower as well. Okay. So what I'm thinking, I mean, I really need to tie up this garage. It is a garage. It is meant to just be for work and tools and, and whatnot, but I want to try and get it looking nice, actually. So I'm going to give it a coat of paint, I reckon, soon. Uh, anyway, I've got another couple of Unistrap bars going the opposite way, and I think I'm going to put the heat exchanger there, and I think I'm going to do some more Unistrap and put, build a diesel heater up high, up back here. It means I'm going to take the exhaust out the wall, which I can do that. This is just for emergency heating the van when my other diesel heater packs up and heating water in the winter. I'm rarely going to use this heater, I think. So anyway, I've um, yeah, I've got I've still got to bolt that heat exchanger down onto those cross un crossbar unit strap there. I have got the little circular pump. Ignore this white one, this is going. I'm going to get the blue and red sort of nylon hose stuff instead. So the pump's going there. And I've got the outlet of the heat, the warm water, going to this T junction there. So this section here will go to the hot tap of the van or the hot tap of a shower if you had that. And this pump, this is the outlet of the pump. So this is going to go into this. Heat exchanger and pass water through it, and then I need an out from there. Oh, it's coming along. Water tank, pump. The cold water is fine, yeah, that goes to the pump, and then it goes to your shower and to your kitchen tap. The, the cold carries on into here. So the water, this pump's going this way. So is this going like this? Yeah, so. Oh right, yeah, because there's a one-way valve there. Right, there's a one-way valve there. So I was just confused then. Why, why wouldn't the, the water coming out of this pump, out of the, the heater and out of this pump, go this way? But yeah, there's a one-way valve there. There's a couple, I think. So yeah, the, the water will circulate. Using this little pump here, will circulate water through the heat exchanger and around through the 12-volt element. But if this isn't on, this does the warming up instead of this. Oh, get in there, get in there. I told you earlier about me needing to, I'm more visual than reading. I'd like to watch a video and just do step by step. I can learn it a bit better that way. It takes me a while to understand diagrams and, and reading. Does that make me thick? Yeah, you haven't seen Abel for a while. Say hello, say hello. This is Abel, he's not very helpful right now. He more wants to just stick things in his mouth and fingers in plug sockets. Look mate, I'm fitting a bubble heater. Can you see over here? No, no, that's the camera, look. See the heater? See it? What are you looking at? Anyway, I don't know if I've done that right now. That heat exchanger, I've got that in the wrong position. <laughs> Confused just then, but I think, yeah, it's fine. So if I had the diesel heater over here somewhere, side exhaust out the side of the van, there's a, the splitter there, so the heat comes into that splitter. It can either come down this way, which will go, but maybe into the garage, or it can go the other way into the heat exchanger. But then when it comes out of the heat exchanger, that will also go either into the garage or into the rest, into the van. So I imagine I would have it the garage doesn't really need heating up here. I treat it like a cool room, actually. I have beers and stuff back here. It keeps it nice and cool. So if I had it, the selector 
just on the bubble heater or maybe just a smidge like 95% going towards the bubble heater then I'll get 5% of the air coming out of here warming up the garage and I'll get 95% of the air going into the bubble out of the bubble and then into the van but by having the bubble heat exchanger you yeah you do you get two out outputs for the diesel heater so yeah I'll just have a little trickle warming up the garage um, so it maybe doesn't I mean it never has actually considering how I did pressure washing in the back here and I spilt water all the time I've never had damp or mold back here the back doors of the van aren't insulated everything else is insulated but uh, yeah anyway um, it has been a bit of a cool room in here keep drinks cool and whatnot but um, I can still keep it like that and just have all the air going through the bubble heat exchanger and then into the van and then I'll keep still keep it as a cool room or I have I will I will now have the option to warm the garage up as well when I use this diesel heater which will be never I've got a diesel heater in there controlled by the afterburner on my phone so yes okay what's next next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna put a bit of pipe between these two barbs on top of the heater you put a pipe there so then the water will go in here out here in here, out here, so the water's going through this heat exchanger. So yeah, in, out, in, out. So I want to put a bit of pipe between here. Alright, different day now. This is definitely going to be a two part of video, I think, this uh, heater. I want to include everything. Uh, I'm going to try to install this little uh, control board now. Probably going to stick it in this wall here. So I can control the heater, keep an eye on, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So there's going to be a messy job. I'm going to use my multi-tool to cut a big square out of this wall. So uh, wish me luck with that. Because it's quite a visible piece of wall. I can always stick some kind of trinket over it. Uh, yes. Drawn a square. That was a scary bit. I've got to drill, I've got to cut through 15 mil cladding and then that's full of insulation. I'm hoping I'm going to miss the, be the, the beam that's here, I should do. Then I've got to cut through the insulation and I've got to cut through ply on the back to be able to get the cables in from the back. So this is going to be messy and I'm not going to film it. I'll just show you the aftermath. <laughs> Right, I've got that in place. I haven't screwed it on yet, but yeah, I'll be able to control the 12 volt heater, the the, uh, the 12 volt heating element, the diesel heating sort of heater controls. I don't know yet. Let's find some screws, screw that into there. But at the minute, I've only just gone through the wall and the insulation behind it. I haven't gone through the ply at the back yet. I'm wondering if I can drop. There's a there's a void there. I wonder if I can drop the cables down rather than uh, making a big hole in the in that sheet of ply at the back. I'm going to screw this on for now. Right, as I said, I'm going to split this into two videos because I want to, I don't want to cut anything out. It's probably, I think it's half an hour long already. Uh, so only those who really want to know how I installed my bowl water heating system will stay to the end. So I'm going to split it into two videos uh, yeah, so what you've seen me is mount the bubble heater itself. I've assembled and mounted the heat exchanger for the diesel heater. And I've got the pump and stuff, a few pipe works done, and I've done that display, you know, the switchboard, control board. So the next video will be about the plumbing. I've got to go and get some 12 mil red and blue plumbing, as well as a load of elbows and splitters and all kinds of things. So yeah, the next video will be about plumbing and wiring it up and programming it all. I need to learn how to do that. So hopefully that's not too complicated. But you will find out how I get along in the next video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the bubble water heating systems. I mean, the idea of free hot water, free, unlimited, uh, unlimited free power from a 12 volt off-grid system is just, that's incredible. 
so many of my installs that I'm doing for customers now are just doing electric cooking. It does mean an upfront expenditure, which is quite a lot of money. You need to buy big inverters and big batteries and a lot of solar and a couple of DC chargers to keep all those batteries topped up. But this fan is uh, getting very closer, closer and closer to being completely off grid. But I think all the time that I'm using diesel to heat the van and gas to cook with, <coughs> yeah, I kind of, I want to be fully off grid. So I want to figure out a way of heating the van that doesn't cost too much fuel. I mean, if your diesel heater is tapped into the fuel tank of the van, you've got to fill the van up anyway. So you, there is still that. But I think more solar, I'm going to add some more solar to the van. I think I've got only I've got 300 watts up there, and it's perfect in the summer. But I've got a feeling in the winter I might struggle a little bit. So yeah, get another get another 100 watts of solar on the roof. That'll be a, a project coming up soon. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.